Okay, we're good there. Mad Mod Squad, do do do. Oh, okay, yeah. I was just again getting into my tunes. My music is so badass, really. I'm just saying. So if you haven't heard all of my music, it first starts in Japan, but I'll get there in a second. Anyway, everybody, welcome to Paving the Way, Five Minute Mondays, and Trash Talk. <laughs> Trash Talk. These are available on the website, by the way. Trash Talk. Um, wow, what if, what an explosive episode this is going to be because we're just coming off of post WrestleMania, baby. Oh, here, hold on a second. Anything can happen at WrestleMania. So we're going to talk about WrestleMania in a whole episode by itself because I have so much to say. Okay. But I want to talk about this because it's getting a little not old, but I just, I feel that it needs to be said, it, just my perspective, my view, my feeling, and maybe some people might enjoy it. So there's that. So sit back, strap in, grab a cold one because it's going to get bumpy, baby. No. <laughs> um. So wrestling world, a lot going on in wrestling world and um, people want to hear, hey, what do you think? What do you think? Because people like hearing perspectives from other people, right? And then what I do is kind of like news or around the world and extra, you know, just what's what's happening. And then I pick and choose what I want, then do, do, do my due diligence, and then I come up with my own theories, right? Okay. So in wrestling world in wrestling world news today, there's a lot of books that are out by women, which I find is very exciting. So I don't know when the very first women's book was written in wrestling. Um, and maybe Marsh can be doing some research right now while I'm talking, but we're going to bring him on in a second. But I think the very first women's wrestling book was maybe, maybe it was China. Maybe, I think. Maybe there was some prior to that. I think maybe it was, I think it was Missy Hyatt's book first in WCW. Um, and then China and then just down the road. Right. So there has been books out there, even Steve Austin's ex-wife. Um, she even wrote a book, um, which is very interesting too, guys. I mean, it's pretty incredible out there. Um, we, I, I posted of all the books that women have written I'm even in the Bellas wrote a book. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty extensive. So you're going to have to look them up. Um, read most of them. Um, quite interesting. I remember when I was reading China's book. <laughs> Woo! Wow. Um, yeah. I remember like this folding the little corners over. What did they call them? Dog ears, dog ears or something. And I'm like reading some of the shit she was saying about me before she even met me. And I'm like, bitch. We need to take this to the ring. We haven't even met yet. Oh, that's another whole story. It's in my book. <laughs> that woman who would be king. But before we start there too, the wrestling world news. Wow. So a lot of things happening in podcasts. Um, something that really caught my eye uh, was Eric Bischoff. They call him Easy E. Um, Easy E for a reason. I don't know. But... Um, Back in the day, probably not that easy to work with <laughs> or for, especially, you know, I feel because I can because I work with them um, being promised things that never really came to fruition and being disappointed. So but, you know, he got into a position um, walking into the AWA. I remember he was a gopher boy for burn. And he um, 
and worked his way up there and was in the right place at the right time. He had some background, I believe, in TV, maybe, or broadcasting back in AWA. I'm not sure. Uh, but um, he, he was a good-looking guy and had a beautiful wife. And he's just, you know, just rambunctious and full of life. And he walked into a situation that was absolutely phenomenal, right? Um, fast forward, he got into WCW and offered a job and it just landed and he's like what the hell am i supposed to do with this i'm just gonna go with it and that's what you do in life you know when you're handed lemons you make freaking lemonade sometimes people put a shot of vodka in it and that's exactly what he did <laughs> and he made one of the best cocktails ever right you can argue with me or do whatever but it was a success at a point well um a lot of people are calling him bitter and salty right now and He's on a fucking rant about this and that and spending daddy's money. I mean, he's really trashing Tony Khan at AEW. And I, I found that kind of like, that's kind of like calling the kettle. You know what I'm saying? I mean, wasn't he spending Turner's money? I mean, what's the difference? Daddy's, Turner's, you, you both are spending someone else's money. Why not just be happy for the guy because it's successful? Eric, <laughs> I guess, from what I, you know, read out there. Um, and it's just like, I was, he's just hammering him, hammering poor Tony Khan. Here's my thing. So what? So what? Tony has the means to do it. Eric, at least he's doing it longer than you did. Right? And he's still hanging on, really. So let's give him some credit, whatever. Um. He's got something great, and we want to see him succeed because if he succeeds, we all succeed. Why keep putting the guy down, Eric? I don't know why. So, unless there's a personal beef there, or if this is something turning into an angle that he's trying to put out there and keep putting Tony down to where he responds, and they're having this social war to get everybody riled up, and then all of a sudden Eric shows on his TV, then Eric can say, See, I made this happen too. I mean, that could be the mindset of a serial killer. I mean, right? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Let's stick it to it. I find it very interesting. <laughs> so I think that it would be a great swerve and a great work. Um, that would be my writing skills on that one. Um, if not, maybe he's just being grumpy in his older age. I don't know. But he has 83 weeks and he had uh, another one um, and now he's starting a new podcast. So, I, and he's just laying it out there and how he feels on a lot of things in the wrestling world. So there's my take on that. I hope he has a better day because I know I made him money. He made more money with me and my incident than he ever did in Turner. And then of course, the birth of other things, and it just started from there. So you're welcome. Um, on that being said, um, transitioning into pointing people out, he's doing a great job at pointing out women in this business and how they're salty and how they're bitter about certain things. And I find that, again, kind of ironic. Um so I think he really went hard on Ronda Rousey and her book and what she said. And um, I'm going to transition over there, too, because I really want to talk, you know, talk about the women in the books like I began and um, about Ronda Rousey's new book coming out. Now, first of all, my book came out the year before, The Woman Who Would Be King, The Medusa Story forward Paul Heyman. All right. Um, and, and then we have Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch's book, which I think is incredible. And it's a, let me tell you, I can say this out of experience. It's not easy. Sometimes you have these come to Jesus talks with yourself or come to spirit talk or just a, you know, banging your head on a freaking wall when, you know, asking yourself, why am I doing this? What's going on? Why? Blah, blah, blah. Because it's like peeling back an onion. You open the door for many things to happen, and you have to be very 
thick skin to know what's coming, um, good, bad, and indifferent, because you're opening yourself up to the world. And that's a huge step. And, and kudos to these women and every woman before her that wrote the books. From the Bellas, you know, to <laughs> so many. Oh, and even Sunny wrote a book. So, I mean, say what you want about each individual. All of these women have written books, like it or not. It takes a lot to do that, no matter their story, okay? Um, and to every male individual out there that wrote a book, congratulations to you as well. It's not an easy task. I feel, though, that I picked a perfect time to write my book, and it was during the pandemic. I mean, what else do you do during a pandemic besides write a book or have lots of sex with your husband or wife or whatever, right? So that's what I did. And it was amazing. So with further ado, let's bring on my producer, Marshy Marsh and the Marsh Bunch. Hey, you. There he is. Oh, nice t-shirt and your hair is fluffier and I love it. Welcome. Yeah, it's doing. It's hanging. Whatever. Hey, it's post-WrestleMania. Woohoo! We're going to get into that in a whole new episode because we got about an oh, yeah. hour to talk about some shit. Yeah. I don't know yep, what's yep, going yep. on. Holy shit, right? Okay. So I started off with my thoughts with the book and led into Eric Bischoff and then led into the girls. So any thoughts on the Bischoff rant? Uh, I mean, I get where he's coming from. I do think there's a difference between Ted Turner's money and Shad's money. Cause I think that Shad doesn't have anyone to answer to. And Ted Turner still did um, had someone to answer to, although they both spend willy nilly, you know? Okay. Thank you. Uh, but I think that there is, there is a, there is a difference in that even WCW when it closed was doing better than AEW is doing now, numbers wise and money wise. Uh, it's just that the, the, the network didn't want it anymore and Ted Turner was gone and there was no one to protect it. I don't think that Tony has to worry about that concept. So the dynamic is different, but the spending's the same. Thank you. Yes, um, I do. I feel that too. So the thing is, is that even though the spending is the same, there may have been networks involved, you know, unfortunately, in Bischoff's case. But if it was that great to continue, anybody in the right mind in any network would have kept it going if they would have seen what was happening. There's mine. However, on con side, on AEW side, yes, it may be dad's money, but so what? At least he has that feeling of com comfort knowing that he still can do something to keep the fight the fight and give this opportunity to everybody out there that is a fan and the, pe the people involved. You know, I don't think, I feel that being at AWA, or AEW myself and WCW, there was more tension at WCW than there is at AEW, even though people say there's a lot of tension at AEW. I've been at both. I would rather be at AEW than WCW. Period. Yeah, I mean, you have a different hierarchy that changes everything. You know what I mean? That's just Who's my experience charge? as a woman in that business, even. So yeah. I can say that. Those are my, you know, I'm not trying to change anybody's views or put words in your mouth. So, you know, it's, that's my feeling on that. Yeah, you gave a good example, I guess. Okay, forward. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. You know, I've spent years at WCW, so there's a lot more history there for you to feel negative about because you experienced so much there. Again, now, let I'm me get this straight, that, though. Yeah. I may feel negative about my position, not the position of the others that got to raise and get, you know, the guys because they made bigger money and tons of money and they had more TV and they had all the control. It's not so much the negative towards them as a people or entertainers. It was the handling of management and situation and what was that's let's just let me clear that up there. Yeah. That. Okay. So um, I think, I would love to see a whole wash in AEW because I, I don't you feel that the competition's good? We need it. 
Uh, largely, I would say, generally speaking, yes. Yeah, I do. I think it's good. Whether, I think it's good. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, inherently, it's a good thing. I don't know if we know the actual impact that it's having as a, especially at this point, as a entity. But yeah, I want it to do well. Can't hurt. I want that. I want that level to rise. I do. Not that I diss WWE or I diss AEW or like a, you know anyone more. It's just it's good to see that rivalry because we can see what rivalry can do, right? And you have both. to be a reason that if you're both going to pay, even let's say everyone's offering the same exact money, which we know they're not, but if everyone's offering the same money, you have mm -hmm. to be somewhere that someone's going to choose. Yeah. Right. So yeah, talent's going to pick that for a reason beyond money, hopefully, most of the time. Sometimes it's oh. going to be prickly because of the money. Hey, WWE is going to offer me only this much now. AEW will offer me this much now. I'm going to go for this, get the money in the bank, and then find out what I want to do after the fact. That's always a dynamic for sure, but it's not it always is. going to be the dynamic. You know? Wouldn't that be something? You just hit on something. Wouldn't that be something if both companies were right around the same pay scale and the talent finally had to figure out which company is the best for the talent? Yes. And they can choose. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? Now it's just like we know where the money's being thrown. And when talents let go, they know where they're going. So that's where they're that's what's happening. Right. It would be nice to be based on the yeah, yeah. It, that'd be cool. All right. It's so cool that's our end. Goal. Even playing playing field would be really nice to see. Um although I have talked to uh I talked to one talent even who was working for AEW and left for WWE and told me that he took a pay cut. But the opportunity into was, WWE? Mm -hmm. WWE was offering him less. But that's my point. Yeah. Maybe because he wants to be marketed and promoted and just yep. that opportunity on a whole different level than AEW is that is able to give right now because they're kind of disorganized. Good yeah. for him. Kudos for making that choice. I, I mean, yeah. high respect to whoever it was. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's I, fucking I, cool. I was surprised he told me at all, but I thought also how great, how great that he had the insight to even say, I can do better here. And he has, he's been thriving over there. So Wow. Um, it's been really that, cool. I, you never it's hear good. that. You never yeah. hear that. That is so cool. It kind of reminds me of people not being able to say something because they're still under a contract. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the same thing. He's able to do what he wants and take lesser pay because he believes in what he believes in. And I wish people had that footing or that feeling that they're able to say what they want without the fear of thinking oh i might get one more run or oh my god my yeah. residual paycheck is coming i can't say anything or that's yeah. it, it does still have the strap on people you, you do see that and that's where the problem came with bishop i think is what i was yeah. saying is a lot of people feel that he's still on the you know heavy wwe thing and that's why he's bashing the, i don't know whatever um, so anyone who talks negatively ahead. about AEW, people are going to have some reason on why that you're doing it. And it can't just be because it's your honest opinion, but yeah, if you're on the payroll, it definitely makes it harder to say. Your it does. <laughs> it does. It does. It's not like you'd yeah. go out and bash the company you work for. Hello. You wouldn't have a job really, or you just speak your mind. So speaking your mind, let's go to that. Let's go to the yeah. transition of the books. So speaking the mind. As Eric, as I was saying about Eric, about Ronda Rousey's book. Let's talk about Ronda Rousey's book. When Ronda first came to the scene of wrestling, I thought it was great. I mean, because she was coming from MMA, I thought, wow, this is really going to give it some legitimacy. Um, I truly believe that she was handpicked for the position. And to be put in those situations, I could only imagine how she felt by me being a wrestler and skilled at what I did. I was nervous as hell and was crapping myself before a match, even thinking I knew what I knew. I could only imagine what she felt not knowing the business and being put in those positions and highly, probably so skilled in each match and so practice that I thought it looked halfway decent for yeah. what she had to do. A lot of people are just laying on her. And I think it has a lot to do with her book and her comments and her quotes and her really attack in the WWE. And I, I and then so they're calling her salty and horrible and you know and that whole thing. And I'm just like, well, she walked in, she accepted everything. She did what she was told. She was under contract. She couldn't say much at the beginning. I mean, why would she just like anybody? And, you know, it, she probably would have got sued. You know what I'm saying? 
So she had to wait till after her contract to express a lot of her feelings. What do you think? Yeah, I think that, I mean, because we saw her on social medias during that run, not being very cordial about the whole concept of it all. I mean, there towards the end, and she started giving little, just little bit of jabs, but it was on the cuff. But a lot of people thought it was because it was a work. I think so, but I do think that there's probably a reality to she had a real frustration there and probably partially because it was a lot more difficult than she'd anticipated it being. Mm, you know what I mean? I think but, it was more than she thought because when you try to bring an MMA style, she's one set style and then come in and trying to make it a work when you want to throw a fucking working punch, you know, it's very difficult. You just don't walk into our business thinking that you can do it right away. Not at all. And so I think that maybe that was her mindset, but she, I truly believe when she came into this, that she really wanted to give it a try. Why not? I do. I truly believe that. Why? Because you would have seen something completely different. You can tell somebody's body language when they walk in and like, I don't want to yeah. be here. Fuck this. And then compared to two people sitting like this, like we're really talking and, you know, we're getting into it. So there's this body language is everything. And the whole first year, watch every one of her matches in a row and you see progress. You see significant yes. progress between matches. And so I remember at the time watching it, just thinking like, well, every match is her new best match she's ever had. And that's the best you can hope for, for you know, and that's what kept the- that's what kept bringing me back to what you were saying is that how would she do before? OK, this is better. This is better. I thought, in fact, I got called out a few times on social media saying I'm like, oh, my God, this was great. She did yeah. great. People are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you know, let's see you step in a ring with zero being pushed at the top and shitting yourself. All right. Let me tell you, that was the best acting ever then. (laughs) Really? And so could she wrestle? Yes, she could wrestle. Some people say she can't. Some people are calling her out now and today in fucking interviews town. She couldn't wrestle. That wasn't her. She's not a wrestler. Well, she had collegiate, she had judo, she had MMA, she had a style more than just professional wrestling, okay? So she had to take all of that and bring that into wrestling. And I'm just going to have to bulk on some of those comments. I I just, I I mean, if you watch her roll around and put her in some submissions, I, I, I think that's wrestling, right? Maybe not pro wrestling style and running the ropes and you know, telling a long ass story well, because she was just thrown into it for whatever. And I thought she did a hell of a job wrestling. She definitely got there early on. You could tell she really wasn't sure how to make it work, but I think there were people mm-hmm. who were working around her to make it work. Um, yeah, I do wonder. And I'm, I'm I mean, the book's probably going to be worth checking out because I'm sure yes. that she goes into. I haven't what, read it yet. Yeah. Me neither. Just little bits here and there, but like, I have a feeling she's going to break down where the love got lost. Cause like you said, Aww. she came in hot with passion and was trying. Yes. 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 And there was a whole I hope that's where true. We all said this is a different <laughs> Rhonda and not in the best way. You know what I mean? So there had to be something that was just turned off on her, in her head. That was just like, I'm just going to get through it. You hit on something. Maybe that's what was it. Marsh. Maybe that's what was it where something turned on her and maybe it was behind the scenes. I have a feeling the fans, I'm feeling management. I think there was a few things that happened at the same time that did not Mm. bode well for us being able to have Ronda Rousey as one of ours for a long time. I think, and I've made this statement before, Ronda was the conduit like from where it was before and to push her and put her in that element. I'm sorry, everybody. But that's what rose women's wrestling right there to get all the eyes on there to bring it, to keep pushing it. Well, how about this? To keep pushing it to the next level. Did it not get the attention? Did it not get the attention of everybody? Yes, it did. Absolutely. So what, yeah. So that being said, she's coming out with uh, saying a lot of things of how she felt about the backstage in her book. You see little in, you know, inserts of um, just kind of, Make you go, hmm, yeah. maybe, you know, was she that happy? Or, you know, I can't wait to read the book because I can't say much except the little inserts that are being put out on social media. Again, those are, um, what are those called? Bite, quick bit or whatever they put yeah, them out there. Like quick quote, baits. Little, oh, clickbait, yeah. Clickbaits. And so I need to know what that is. 
So also another thing that's going on too is a the Becky's book. So I know there's a question you want to ask me and about books and stuff, but um, I don't know if Rhonda completely wrote her book, sat down and wrote it, you know, verbatim and then put it out. I I, I don't believe that because it needs to be looked at for, you know, double words and all of that stuff. So no, but I think we did find another name on the book. Yeah, that may have helped her. Piece. Yes, that may have helped her on the book as well. So, I mean, kudos to that. And I just, I cannot wait to read that book. She also made a statement. Um, um, uh, we're going to get over to Becky's book here one second, where she said she was in an incident where they were in a match or something. Maybe you can help clear this up for me. Is that she, um, that one of the guys or something match went too long and Rhea and Charlotte were having a match, and she just threw her dick on the table. She, Rhonda said that Charlotte threw her dick on the table and said, no, we're not doing it that way. And she continued to go longer, and it just became a whole shit show. What was that? Uh, as far as the whole shit show, I'm not sure about, but it says that uh, there was a quote from it where during Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair's match uh, that the referee – kept telling them to go backstage and Charlotte threw her big dig on the table and said, no, we're going to do this awesome effing match. And that's what the women are dealing with. Oh, and this is a quote from a, um, from an interview, not from the book itself. Oh, um, but does say, uh, they're not allowed to show how effing amazing they are because, Oh, the crowd's going to be tired for the guys match afterwards. And that's bullshit. Um, but I guess the match wasn't supposed to go as long as it was. Um, it makes me think cause the way that it was written, I don't know. I guess on first glance, it sounds like the, you know, we're going to do the time that we were allotted. Sounds like they were told to go short when they went out there. And so Charlotte was actually sticking up for the women. Is that what yeah. we're getting? And that's she, that's what we're gathering. And then, so she was actually voicing, Hey, this is what happened. So, you know, and if it wasn't for Charlotte, so this is what we're getting out of that whole interview. So until I read the book, we won't know more. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, you know, with Becky's book being out too, um, I just want to point something out. And here's, I'm going to use these three as an example. Rhonda's book, Becky's book, and my book, The Woman Who Would Be King. So those three books um, are about a biography, individuals, memoirs, whatever. We wrote our book. And then your question to me earlier, and asked me if you could ask me this live, in front of everybody, do I have a problem with it? And absolutely no. I, I want to express this. And yeah. so so people feel your question to me is what? Uh well, I know you worked on the book with Greg Oliver and I've had a chance to talk to him a few times. Really good dude. And I wonder how much, because of the book has so much of your voice and sounds like you talking, how much was maybe you recording into a device he was there versus how much did you write down and hand to him? Like how That's a great question working with someone like that. Great fucking question. So on biographies, everyone, everybody's method is different. So I'm speaking on my experience and then you can pick and choose and how you want to see it and then ask your questions to them if you ever get. So on my book, I started writing my book in 1993, 1993. Mm -hmm. And I wrote my book. I had my transcript. I already had everything written out. Right. It was written out. But before that transcript, I actually sat down with the little hand recorders with Vince Russo in WWF. Vince Russo took the time to sit down with me and record. And we were going to start kind of like maybe let's write a book way back then. It never happened. A couple years before I even started writing my book, out of the blue, Russo. I meant Vince Russo, not Bishop. Vince Russo and, uh, got a hold of me and said, Deuce, I still have those tapes. Would you like them? I'm like, holy shit. Hell yeah. Wow. So I got those tapes. A lot of things on them. Not still kind of distorted. Use those tapes to update my already written biography. Got my relationship with ECW because of our, our uh, friend. John Arezzi, and um, I got a publishing deal. Then I said, I need this to make sense. Not that it doesn't. It does. It's my life. 
And I'm like all over the place when I speak and when I talk. And I'm just, unless I, like when I'm doing a speech, I write it out and then I can speak it and it's in order, right? Whatever. With the book, I need, I wanted it to be me this time. I needed to I needed it to sound and read like me and speak. So my number one best thing about the book is when people read it they say, "I feel like you're talking to me." That is you. That's the whole idea. That was me. So working with Greg, ECW said, "We have a writer that would be good with you to bounce everything off to take what you have." You need, you know, you do you whatever you guys decide to do and bring it together. I'm like, okay, I can do that. Fuck yeah. So we sat around for about a year and we spoke almost every day, every fucking day. I mailed him that transcript. I mailed him all of my, vi- my tapes and everything I had. And for one year with us talking, because his basic thing and reason why to talk to me is not only to go over the stories and my life and everything in the transcript and the and the and the tapes to make sure they were true and legit mm-hmm. he wanted to do research and background and make sure everything was true and up and up so not only did he do that he's the one that did a lot you know the um research to actually reach out to people back from my childhood to find out if my stories were true oh yeah and he was the sounding board to say hey this is what happened. This is what I got. And suggestions. Not to tell me what to do, but a suggestion. So maybe some of the names were changed in my book. So what I'm saying is maybe in Rhonda's, maybe that's the person that helped her you know, write hers. A lot of people are saying it it does not sound like her or the way she speaks. Well, like you said, she had a what a disorder? What was it? She had a speaking disability when she was younger. And I only know about it really because um my one of my closest friends, his son had the same thing. And so he talked oh. to me about it. Um, and so there's like a speech impediment and it becomes difficult yes. to communicate. She's talked about it a few times too, but that's how she got into martial arts was the idea of speaking with your body because she couldn't speak with her mouth. Oh. Um, so I just also wonder how much of her thoughts sound different than she speaks because it just doesn't sin- translate. Sin- there. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't translate like how the book is written, but I truly believe yeah. that those you know, her feelings, her stories, her, you know, experiences. But what I was told by any publisher, any publisher, is that it needs to make sense. And so it needs a flow. You know, it's just like wrestling. It needs a a beginning, a high spot, and a finish. (laughs) So, and then everything needs to flow. And then, you know, this and that. So let's go to Becky's book real quick. And, And then Becky's book, you know, she says that she sat down and wrote the whole thing. She She probably did just like I did. You know what I mean? But with Becky's book too, and my and Mick Foley reading it and say, yeah, and it's a book that she wrote, not a ghostwriter. So that that's kind of a put down to like ghostwriters or people that help or whatever. I just thought that was well, that was weird to emphasize on that when she she didn't do the editing. And here's the thing too. Here's the difference between all three books. Becky did have a humongous Simon and Schuster, I believe. A megawatt publisher. Yeah. I mean, if she was just Becky out of wrestling, I can probably tell you the odds of her getting into a Simon Schuster compared to her being in the spot she has now. No diss on her. I'm just talking about it's great to be Bex, (laughs) you know? And then Rhonda, with her background and her just coming out of WWE and signing with Penguin, that's freaking great. And I have ECW, which is a huge, they used to publish with wwe so i mean they're all three great publishing companies but when you look at the the statuses of them right and where they're at there is a big difference okay so the difference on all three too is becky has a machine behind her she's on tv every week she's popular and she wrote a book i hope of course that's going to do well you take the machine out of there which W not promoting Rhonda's book, correct? No, I, don't, I haven't seen him talk about it. No, no. So that's her and her publishing company or whatever she has to help her. Myself, it was just me. Just myself. And EC and and people around me. 
And so each level did the best that they could with what they have, from Becky's to, to Rhonda to myself. And of course, you want nothing but good for all three of them. Absolutely. And all the rest in the future and whatnot. But what I'm trying to point out here is the power of the machine. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. But I will point out this, that WWE contacted them. They are very willing in the pictures in the book of Bull Nakano and I wrestling. So, I mean, they were very helpful. And I you know to help or, you know, help get it. Yeah. Which is, yeah, gosh, I mean, it would have been great, but, you know, they don't have value in it. You know what I mean? Of course, why would they? Right? Why wouldn't they? Yeah. And for the record, for anybody who's confused, ECW is actually ECW Press. It's the book publishing company you worked with. It's not Extreme Channel. Out of Canada. Yeah. Out okay. of Canada. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So there we go. Look on all of that. If there's any other you want to put in or. I mean, isn't it kind of wild though the the levels and the machine behind you absolutely it'll yeah and i think that foley was emphasizing on the ghost rider things i believe it was bischoff who had mentioned that his first book that was written through wwe was a book he wasn't involved in that there are stories in there he doesn't know what they're talking about because he just wasn't involved they just said we're doing this book so it's completely he did say rider. that yeah he did say that he did yeah. say that he's like i had no control over that book basically yeah. they'd put it out yeah so you know, to go back to China's book and all the things she was saying me, saying about me, made me think: Did she really say that, or was it still she vindictive did. feelings that WWE <laughs> felt back then? Could, right? Could easily. It be makes that. you think. I do wonder because I mean Foley was big on it because he was he wrote his first book and the machine was behind him and he ended up New York Times bestseller and I think it oh. was the first interesting book to be New York Times bestseller. Damn straight. I do wonder if you'd be willing to ask him. Stone Cold's book, because Stone Cold said so. Ask him how much he actually wrote of that book. I'd just be Ooh, curious. Steve you know? on his book? Yeah. Oh. You know, someday, someday, I will ask Steve. What about Paul? Paul had a book, too. Yeah. Paul oh. had a book, too. Did he write much of that book or not? And I don't mean that as a diss to those guys. No, it's none of, of this system is. And part of how the thing works. But at the same time, those guys aren't trying to sell that book or never never tried to sell that book much. And so it makes me wonder if they had much of a hand in it or if it was another product that came out. You know what I mean? Right. Like a t-shirt. Becky's book is a product of WWE. Definitely. Yes. But I do also think that Becky was, is heavily invested in this book because she put so much into it. It's not like how Bischoff just didn't care if the book sold or not because he didn't put much into it. Becky mm. put a lot of work into this book and that's why she's making all these appearances and going to all these places. and posting She's not them. making it's a big investment to WWE. Okay, that's another thing. She got a beautiful book tour. Beautiful book tour. When we try to get a book tour in all of those places that she's at, mm -hmm. zero. They wouldn't touch. They wouldn't touch it. But because they have that entity and that that company, you slip right in. It's easy. You try it, everybody out there, to write your own book and get into all these places. It don't happen. Oh, yeah. So I'm just glad that she's in a position to have this. You know, I, I would like to see a man or a woman be able to do it outside the machine and be as successful and have equal playing ground. You know what I mean? Again, fighting for shit on your own and proving it can be done and still making a difference. Okay, we're good there. Right, cool. Juice is coming for you and it won't be nice. It's not a face. She you burning like a long trump place from the states to japan she don't give a fuck throwing belts in the can i rock with the dose of fear is no excuse baby tell